feast of trumpets. Uh, and the word trumpets is a Hebrew word, teruah, and it's found only here. It's, it's translated as shofar in most passages, but this is a little bit different. On the Feast of Trumpets, which today is called Rosh Hashanah, on the Jewish calendar, it's the Jewish New Year, secular Jewish New Year. Usually it falls around the month of September. Sometimes it'll go later in the month of October. But on the uh, Feast of Trumpets, 100 distinct shofar blasts are sounded. But there are four different types of blasts that are sounded. Can we walk over here? to this large shofar, and let me just show you something here. Because if you look uh, on, the, on the face of this shofar, and it was actually, uh, this is styrofoam, you know, would be amazing if there was one that big. But on the first line, the second line, and the third line, you see uh, Hebrew words. These Hebrew uh, words are three of the distinct trumpet sounds that you have on the Feast of Trumpets. You have what's called the takiyah. The takiyah are three second sustained notes. You have the shivarim, which are three one second notes rising in tone, doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. It's not that good of an, an, an imitation, but I think you get the point. Then you have what's called the teruah, which is short series of staccatos, a blast extending over a period of three seconds. Then you have what's called the takia, the takia gadola, which is the final long blast in which that sound, you take a deep breath and you blast the shofar and you hold that as long as you can. Now, please listen to me very, very, very carefully, okay? On the Feast of Trumpets, there's a hundred trumpet blast, but the last blast is called the Takia Hagodola, which is the longest and the loudest sounding blast known to the Jews as the last Trump. So, when Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians and said, We shall be changed in the moment of the of an eye at the sound of the last trump, the Jews knew to Kiahagodala, which is the same type of trumpet sound that Moses heard in Exodus chapter 19 when the Bible said he heard the voice of a trumpet waxing loud and long. Because the Tekia Hagodala, that last sound that comes on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets, is a loud and long sound. So, when that loud and long sound is heard in Exodus chapter 19, on the mountain, the Lord comes down, Moses goes up. That is the imagery that every Jewish Christian knew when the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, the trump of God, and 1 Corinthians 15. Listen to me carefully. The last trump that Paul wrote about has absolutely zero and nothing to do with the seventh trump of the seventh angel. It does not. One of the reasons, now remember this, one of the reasons that that seventh trumpet sounds and says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. How can the angel say that when you still got 42 months left in the tribulation? Because the Antichrist is just coming to Jerusalem, setting up his kingdom. It is a prophetic announcement that now God is preparing to set up his kingdom upon the earth. It's a prophetic announcement. I'll show you something else about the trump of God. I'll probably step out of the light here for just a second, but there is... A, I'm going to come and stand here in the front of this right here and show you this. In the book of Numbers... It talks about take two trumpets of silver, one for the calling of the camp and for the journey of the assembly, okay? So they, uh, Moses was, was to make two trumpets of silver, and when they blasted on the silver trumpet, the first time they heard it, it assembled everybody at their tent door. But there was a certain blast they did the second time that when they blasted it. Everyone moved from the tent, and the, they packed up, and they moved to a new location. I like that. And so there were two blasts. There was a, a first series, and then there was a second series of blasts. Now, remember Paul said at the sound of the last trumpets when we're changed and we're caught up. But there was also, and you've got to find this in Jewish teaching. In fact, I, I go to Jerusalem every year on my whole land trip, and there is a Jewish bookstore in the old city. Now, they're about to get a huge plug right here with me saying this. 
And it's not far from the Temple Institute. In fact, I have a lot of the uh, books that the Temple Institute puts out as well. And in that bookstore, they've now translated a lot of the Jewish books to the English language, and there are thousands and thousands of books that you can purchase. And one of the things that was noted is what's called the Great Assembly that happened every seven years. And at the Great Assembly, guess what color trumpet they used? They used a gold trumpet. Every seventh year when the king and the high priest and the head of the, the Jerusalem synagogue got together on the beam on the platform, read from the scroll, etc., which is a picture, by the way, of the Lamb opening the seven-sealed book with the 24 elders being present, they blew a gold trumpet. Now, gold is, represents deity, and silver represents redemption. Okay, so we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We're in the process of continually being redeemed, but in the end, our redemption draweth nigh, right? The redemption of our body, which is the resurrection of the dead, getting a brand new body. That's a picture of the silver. But the trump of God would be a gold trump because gold represents deity and divinity. So my point is to try to make everything, uh, first of all, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it is a trump of God and not the trump of an angel. There are seven angels blowing trumpets. Boy, I wish I had more time to, to really just uh, get into that. So the point is that you, for people to, to, to go mid, mid-trib only on the idea of the seventh angel, and that's the last trumpet in Revelation, and try to make that the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, you can't do it when you understand from Jewish perspective, feast of trumpets. Now that leads me to something else. Jesus died at Passover, was in the tomb at unleavened bread, was seen alive by his disciples during first fruits. That's the three fall feast. Passover, I'm sorry, Pentecost is when the church is born in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Holy Spirit's poured out, and 120 believers are baptized in the Spirit. 3,000 souls are saved that day. 5,000 souls are saved just a few days later. That, in, that initiated what's called the ecclesia, or the church, the Christian church. Now, the next series of feasts in line are the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, 10 days later, the Day of Atonement, five days later, Tabernacles. Now, you can absolutely see that the coming of Jesus for the church and the great trumpet sound that raises the dead is a picture of the Feast of Trumpets. I've always felt that Jesus may come during the fall feast probably somewhere around the Feast of Trumpets. Well, someone says, well, wouldn't we know the day nor the hour? Well, in Jesus' day, the Feast of Trumpets could only begin when they would see the silver sliver of the new moon, and they had to have two witnesses to go before the Sanhedrin to, just to, to uh, sanctify the moon and say the moon is beginning its month. So there was a 48-hour window when you didn't know the day or the hour the feast was going to begin. And Jesus had told his disciples, no man knows the day or the hour but my Father only. Of course, the Father is the heavenly uh, judge, and he's in the heavenly temple of heaven. He is the one that determines it. So there may be an allusion to that 48-hour window where no one knew the date or the hour that that feast was going to begin in the time of Christ. However, the Day of Atonement is a day when judgment is set. And that's a picture of the tribulation in Tabernacles is uh, seven days in length. It's where Jews and Gentiles come together and they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And so that is a picture of the kingdom. I believe the kingdom which is coming when the Messiah rules and reigns on earth for a period of 1,000 years. Now, having, having said this, let me, let me go back and just share something with you. That the catching away, according to the Word of God, is to prevent the believers, the church and the believers who are living from going through the tribulation. There's always been persecution against Christians since the very beginning of Christianity. However, the future tribulation is the wrath of Almighty God. Now, let me give you some scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 2, 8, and 9. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of every man that does evil, of the Jew first, also of the Gentile. Romans 5, 9, much more than being justified now by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which, was deliver, who has deliver, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now, 
There's a law of separation. Matthew 13, 47, the good and bad fish are separated from the net. The wheat and tear, Matthew 13, 30. The sheep and the goat, Matthew 25, 33. The five wise and the five foolish virgins, Matthew 25, 11. The profitable and unprofitable servant, Matthew 25, 30. Two are working in the field. One is taken and the other left. Two are in the bed. One